G'day guys, welcome back. It is a beautiful night in Kelantan and I'm ready to answer all the questions that you have sent to me. So let's get started. Okay, so I got a lot of questions and also some comments from you guys. Jim Neville says, I hope I will never play in Asia. <laughs> That's funny, Jim. I don't know what you meant by that, but if you could explain yourself in the comment section below, it would be interesting to hear. You know, YouTube is very funny. There's some people out there that have some very big imaginations. For example, when I was doing the video on how to strengthen your knee, one of the top comments was, you've got a hole in your sock. And then people were saying they should set up a Patreon account to buy me new socks. And others were saying, if I strengthen my knee with these exercises, will I get a hole in my sock? And then people were saying about I need to strengthen my moustache. There's some uh, interesting people out there. But anyway, back to the questions. So the question that I get the most from you guys is, I want to move to Asia. What is your advice and how to do that? So the main thing that I tell people is networking. You can look it up, all the players, the foreign players that are playing in Malaysia and you can send them a message on Instagram or Facebook and hopefully some of them will reply. Once they reply, maybe they can put you in contact with an agent. You can message clubs, maybe you'll get a contact like that. Call them up. Pick up the phone. Do whatever you have to do to try and find some contacts. Also, if you come to Asia and you find out about where a team is training, go up to the team. Go up to the coach, go to the management and see if you can get some information, a trial. Meet, you'll meet people at trials, you'll meet other players, you'll meet agents and that's how you build up your networking and that's my best advice on how to move to Asia. So another person said, how did you find teams in Germany? Exactly the same thing. When I moved to Germany, I knew zero people Oh, well, that looks like a three, but I knew zero people in Germany with football. So what did I do? I went down to a local team. I trained with some people. I talked to them. I made contacts. I messaged agents. I messaged clubs. I messaged a lot of people. I found trials and I eventually found a team in Luxembourg and I signed there for a season. And when you're in the country, it's much easier to find contacts because you're actually there, actually there, and it's easier this way because you can talk to people, you can go up to the field and meet more people. Next question is, I'm an agent with good players but find it difficult to get into the Asian market. So let me explain how it works in Malaysia. There's a lot of agents in Malaysia, a lot of local agents, and each agent has strong connections. Perhaps they have strong connections with the management and can get a trial for their player that way or they have a connection with the coach and the coach sometimes only trusts a certain number of agents and will only get players from them. Now if you're an agent from overseas it's important that you come to Asia. You can bring some players along, find some trials and bring your players there and when you're at the trials, talk to the coaches, meet with local agents, try and establish business connections. It's very difficult trying to communicate and set up with people from overseas and if you're actually there, it's going to make it a lot easier to begin with. Once you you need, really need to establish a good network first before you can just stay overseas and send players to um, teams. So next one, Tim Wilcox says, was Jason Davidson separated from you at birth? The answer is no. Yeah, we look a little bit similar. He's half Japanese, I'm half Malaysian. So we're both half Asian, so we share that similarity. Thanks, Tim. Uh, next question, is it worth playing in Thailand if it's not the top division? Now I can't answer this question for you, but for me personally it was one of the best decisions of my life. 
I was working in Australia full time as a teacher and I was also playing semi-professional uh, football. I was training three to four times a week. But when I moved to Thailand, it was full time training. Training as a professional. I was in a totally different new environment and I loved it. Even though the money was less, it was worth the experience and was a stepping stone to greater things. And since then I've gone on to play in many different countries, had so many good experiences and now I'm here in Malaysia and loving life. Love it. Absolutely love it. Next question. What should a fullback focus on and can a fullback improve shooting ability and goal scoring? Example, free kicks. So to answer that second one, firstly, uh, improving shooting, goal scoring, everyone can improve on everything. If you practice, you will improve. Now as a fullback, if you're quite big, then the way you're gonna score more goals is through set pieces, whether that be through free kicks or corners. Now, if you wanna score more goals, then you have gotta practice your heading. And to be good at heading, you've also got to have good power in your legs. So training your jumping, training your uh, positioning of the ball when you head it. It's all important you can practice this and you get better. Look at Cristiano Ronaldo in the last game uh, for the Champions League. He was a machine with heading. So you can score more goals this way. Now, what should a fullback focus on? And the most important thing that a fullback should focus on is positioning. If you are in a good position, it will help your game so much. For example, if the ball is getting crossed on this side and you need to position body so you can see the striker, but also see when he's crossing it. If you're just looking at the cross, it's gonna make it a lot easier for the striker and positioning is gonna save you so many times. Also, like when you receive the ball from the goalkeeper, how you position your body, being aware where your left and right backs are. If a striker's got the ball and he's coming at you, do you go or do you stay, do you jockey? This is so important and this makes you a better player and you can learn off the best players on the internet. It's so easy nowadays, you just go to YouTube, you type in the center back's name and you look at their actions. The next thing you need to work on is distribution. So getting the ball, receiving it, passing it on to the right back, passing it on to left back, passing through balls, passing to the right wing, left wing, long balls, left and right foot, work on that. Also, as a center back, you need to sometimes bring the ball up. So be confident with taking the ball up, dribbling it up, and then passing the ball on. And then, of course, you can work on physicality, winning headers, and uh, tackling. Tackling is important when to tackle, when to not tackle, when to jockey. There's so many things you can work on, but the main thing that I would say is positioning. Even if you're a slow player, you've got good positioning, you're going to give the striker a hard time. Next question is, are there scouts in Asia? Of course there's scouts in Asia. Nowadays with technology, for example in the Malaysian League, once a goal is scored on TV, five minutes later it will be on Instagram and everyone knows who you are. If you're playing good, if you're scoring goals, people will know about you and teams this? will definitely come for you. It happens a lot in Malaysia. Players do well and the big teams come in and sign them uh, for their team and their value just increases exponentially. That's what we all want. Next question, do you make enough money to support your family? Yes, I make enough money to support my family. I've got my wife here. We've got a nice apartment that we're living in. We can afford food. We can afford holidays, so we're very happy. To be honest, I don't earn a very good salary at this new team, Kelantan, but I am playing all the games, so I'm very happy with that. Last season, I was on a very, very good salary, but I wasn't playing, I was injured, so I was not happy about that. But now, playing, I'm enjoying football so much, and money's not the most important thing. And if you're playing good, money will come. So no problems there. 
So next question is in reference to the last video about uh, what is the best age to come to Asia and I said it's over 25 years old. Most of the players are around on average 28 to 29 years old. And one person said, what happens if you're young, you're strong and you can play? Look, like I said, there are a few players in the Malaysian league that are quite young. There's one 21 year old and there's a few 23, 24, 25 year olds. So, of course, there's always going to be a chance, but it's more difficult if you've got the money and you want to come over, then do so. But I think it's better that wherever you're playing at the moment, you build yourself up, play a lot of games and then come over when you're older, like me. How is the level compared to Europe? Now, this is a bit of a tricky question. So, in Malaysia, the foreign players here are very good. Some have played at the top level. So, these foreign players, compared to Europe, they fit in with top players. But the local players, they're not as strong. And I would say overall, if I was, compa if I was to compare it to Germany, because I've played in Germany, I would say that the top team in Malaysia, Johor, would be equivalent to a bottom third division team and the Malaysian Super League teams would be equivalent to maybe fourth division teams, the middle, lower fourth division teams and the Malaysian Premier League would be equivalent to top fifth division teams. Remember Germany has a very strong setup and if you compare it to other leagues in Europe, they are one of the strongest. I remember when I was playing in the 5th division in Germany, we would play against Czech 2nd division teams and beat them. We would do well against Polish 2nd division teams. So, it's hard to compare when you say Malaysia versus Europe, but this is just for Germany, so this is all I can really say. Now, you also said, uh, do players just go there for the money? Now, predominantly, the answer is yes, they come here for the money. The foreign players are a lot older, they've been playing in Europe, for example, and they haven't earned that much money. There's a high tax. Germany has a high tax. Even if you're playing in a high level, you can pay up to 50% tax. So, in Asia, you can earn a lot of very good money uh, compared to Europe. So, yes, a lot of players come here when they're older and try and earn money before they retire. So there you have it guys, all your questions are answered. If anything is unclear, then write it in the comment box below. If you've got a new question, then ask away. I'll do another video like this in the future. Add me on Instagram if you want to follow my football career and what I'm up to. Also, you can ask me questions on Instagram, I reply in there. I can't always promise that I will reply to you, but I try my best. A lot of people write to me and I'll make a video like this again soon because it's good. Everyone can hear the answers, so I don't need to repeat myself twice. And yeah, thanks again for watching guys and until next time, ciao.